I have the Galaxy Z Fold 5 finally in my hands. You may have also just got your own. And sometimes starting your life with a foldable, you can have a lot of questions about how do I get the most out of using this thing? Fortunately, I'm here to tell you how to do that. Today, I'm gonna to show you everything you need to turn on first to get the most out of your Galaxy Z Fold 5. Now let's go. So I've already done a full video on some settings you should turn on when you first get your Samsung. It was centered around the S23 and the S23 Ultra, but a lot of what's in there can actually be relevant for the Z Fold 5 as well. Today's video is going to be about the things you need to turn on to get the most out of a foldable Samsung smartphone, because they pack it full of features that really set this thing apart from any other phone on the market. I'm gonna break it down into three different areas. Firstly, the settings you need to enable inside the phone's settings menu, obviously. Next, the camera, because there is a lot that you can get out of the camera experience on the Z Fold 5. And then some ways you can customize your Fold experience, again, to truly take advantage of this aspect ratio on the inside display. Let's start with the settings. As per usual, my favorite menu to start with is the advanced features menu. Inside here is where you can tweak and tune and add in extra functionality to get the most out of your Samsung phone in general, not just the foldable. Good thing with the foldables is there is extra stuff in here, even further, that allows you to get more out of your phone. We'll start with the labs menu. Inside labs, there's a setting that you absolutely need to turn on, which is turn on multi-window for all apps. No questions turn this on. As we've experienced down the years that some apps are not getting on board with multi-window and multitasking. Samsung knows this, so they put this in here so you can basically force any app into supporting it. Example here is Duolingo. Duolingo just refuses to open in a multi-window environment. Straight up does not want to do it. What you can do here is with turning on multi-window for all apps, you'll notice the change. This overrides it and forces it. In the past, I've encountered Samsung will warn you this app was not designed for multi-window, blah, blah, blah. I've never really found it to be an issue. Previously, Instagram used to not support this. However, now it does. So go figure. The second part to this is you want to turn on landscape view for portrait apps. What this setting does is you can go in here and toggle on any app where if they are fixed into portrait orientation and when you rotate it, nothing happens, you can actually enforce it in the labs menu to make it go portrait mode. Instagram, for example, doesn't actually want to rotate into landscape view. So when you turn this view on, you'll notice that Instagram now will rotate into landscape orientation. But there's a catch with this. You'll see that there's some black bars left and right to Instagram. But fortunately for us, Samsung has, has worked around this because inside this toggle as well, when you go deeper, you can make it go full screen. So it just means that there's a lot of different ways that you can force things to happen. And this is definitely one of them. And the last point in here is flex mode panel. It's the same process. Flex mode panel is Samsung's way of optimizing it when it's in that flexed state. Go in here by app, choose the ones you think will get the best experience out of. For example, Spotify is a great one because when you put Spotify into flex mode, you get some media controls in that bottom half of the screen. So I definitely recommend activating for as many apps that you think would be necessary. Inside advanced features, they've got a new multi-window toggle area. Inside here is some extra stuff pertaining specifically to the fold. For example, the show multi-window menu with one window open. So Samsung brought in last year a multi-window menu option. When you have multi-window open, have a little tab at the top to enable you to do certain things. However, that's used to only be enabled when you had multi-window open, you had two apps side by side. Now you get this option to toggle it on here and have a multi-window I guess, menu pop up so you can control some things to do with multi-window, which is one window's open. The second one that I'd recommend in here is full screen in split view. So when you do have two apps side by side, it will remove the top and the taskbar and give you a full screen experience to really maximize the screen real estate that you have. So you see all those apps in their glory. There's another one that I recommend tying into this in the good lock module. When we get to customization, I'll touch on that. The next one to focus on here is the display menu. Moving out of advanced features, the display menu gives some extra stuff specifically for the Z Fold 5 for you to take advantage of. That being said, there's one that I recommend you doing on any Samsung phone, and that is to turn on the gestures. Because by default, Samsung still ship phones with the three button navigation system, which is fine. 
Look, a lot of people still use that, and I think that's why Samsung keep it enabled. But if you're clued on, or if you're smart switching and your previous phone had it, it will come with you. But if you haven't smart switched and you're starting fresh, go in here and, and turn the gestures on. You, you won't regret it. The other one in here is continue apps on cover screen. So when the Fold first got introduced, Samsung did bring in cover screen continuity. This is where if you had an app open on the front, you open it up and it transitions to the inside. Down the years, Samsung did bring in the other way where you could close the phone and continue using it on the cover screen. Makes a lot of sense because if you are, let's say grabbing a coffee and you need to then use just one hand for your foldable, you can close it and keep working on it. Really great idea for apps like Twitter or your social media apps because you can continue to scroll and you don't lose your place when the app closes. A new thing with the Z Fold 5 is the taskbar has now jumped from two apps to four recent apps. So alongside the ones that you permanently dock there yourself, it can keep there the recent four apps, up to four recent apps. Again, you turn this on in the display settings, in the taskbar, however many you think is necessary, two, three, or four. And the last one in here worth looking at is full screen apps. Again, some apps aren't optimized for the aspect ratio of Samsung's inner display. The app that never used to be optimized was Instagram. It used to have this 16 by nine and letterboxing either side of it, which was either great because you got the full version of the app or it was terrible because you wanted to fill the display. Either way, the experience wasn't right. Samsung with full screen apps enabled you to force it. Thankfully, Instagram no longer has this problem and they have created and curated a proper uh, aspect ratio experience for that inner display. But for other apps that don't quite have it yet, you can come in here and turn it on. Again, there is something in good lock in the customization section. So make sure you stick around for that because that one is truly exciting. The last one that's new and I also I recommend turning on underneath security and privacy underneath fingerprints, you can now enable fingerprints to be always on, but depending on the display that you, you wish to have it on for. So previously it was just always on and whether the screen was open or closed, it was always there waiting to recognize the fingerprint. Now, because you're most likely not going to activate the fingerprint with the phone open, or you won't need to because you either have it already unlocked when you open it or it's just going to transition to that lock screen anyway when you unfold it. You can now have it to be fingerprint only straight from the cover screen. Really nice change and one that I think makes a lot of sense, just giving you more options as the user. Now I'm going to move on to the Fold 5's cameras. Not the camera hardware. We'll get to cameras and how you can use the cameras in a later video. I have a full video planned on how to get the most out of the Z Fold 5 and its cameras and the form factor. What I want to show you is some settings you can enable to start you off. When you're using the camera when the phone is unfolded, there's a toggle that you can enable called Capture View. It's a button that you press and basically what this does is it separates the display into sections. One section will be a, a much bigger preview of the photo you've just taken. You can also much more quickly delete that photo if it's no good. And then you're on the right hand side, you get your preview and your controls. Usually this only happened when you put the phone into flex mode, but this toggle here allows you to have it all the time when you need it. The other setting that you might want to take advantage of is the cover screen preview button, which enables you to turn the cover screen preview on. Not so much a setting as it is a function, but it might be something that you just need to be aware of where it is so you know how to turn it on. There it is. The other thing is do not use the inner camera on the foldable display for selfies. It's just not worth it. Samsung have optimized it to be a lot better, but this camera is for video conferencing only. That is where I would use this thing the most. I wouldn't bother using it any other way. There are other ways to take selfies on this thing, including the rear cameras. And that toggle exists on the back. I will go into depth way more on a full camera breakdown on the Z Fold 5, but just know this is here from the start so you can get used to the idea that this is what you can do. Now we're going to look at customization, how you can truly personalize the fold, but not in the way that you might have thought. The first way is actually in the stock settings app. So you can go in here and underneath the home screen settings menu, there is a thing called cover screen mirroring. Now, depending on how you like it, you can have it mirrored. So the cover screen home screen layout is mirrored on the inside, or you can create two separate custom layouts. So if you do basic menial stuff on the front screen, you might want to have it set up that that's where you have access to on your home screens. Some basic social media, a couple of widgets, but nothing too drastic. 
when you open it up, you might want to have your bigger widgets displayed with some calendar widgets or some apps that take advantage of productivity and multitasking. I specifically have it set up so the two different docks at the bottom have very different apps for taskbar purposes in particular. So that could be something you might want to toggle on and off depending on what it is you want to do. The other thing that Apple users won't know a thing about is you can change the grid size of your home screen and your apps menus. It's so funny that no matter what size iPhone you have, you can't control this, you're fixed. Whereas on the Fold 5, you can toggle and have it be so that the apps are a little bit smaller and you can truly take advantage of all the space that you have. So much more room for activities. Now, the next aspect of customization is good lock. You have many different ways within good lock to to change the feel and look of your phone. That's another video that I already have done. So you can go back and you can go and watch all the other ways you can improve your design and feel of your phone to suit your needs. What I'm talking about here with GoodLock is the Fold specific stuff, the stuff that you can enable to truly get more out of your Fold versus the stock experience that Samsung provide. The main one in here that you would want to access is called Multistar. And more specifically, inside Multistar, the I love Galaxy foldable menu. This has so many little niceties that you can enable to truly make your foldable experience your own. But first, I don't actually recommend turning this on at all, but it's the fill under display camera with black. So basically shutting off those pixels and you can see the camera cut out on the inside display. Why you'd want to do this with the under display camera being quite neatly hidden is beyond me. But, you know, for people who want to you have the option. One that I absolutely recommend figuring out as you go is the show app always full screen when unfolding. Basically, there's some apps that again, when you go from the cover screen to the inner display, it doesn't expand it to the full inner display's aspect ratio by default. You either have to manually do it with the little button down the bottom or it just doesn't do it. So what this module allows you to do is turn on by app, the app that you prefer. I just go on and turn on all, but for demonstration purposes, my real estate app, for example, when I transition from cover screen to inner display, you'll see it doesn't go to full screen. But when I go in and toggle real estate on, it then automatically transitions to the bigger display. Tied into that is a toggle that you can turn on to not show a notice or a pop-up when this happens. 100% recommend doing that. That would that would be annoying. Next one here inside the I Love Foldables is continue all apps on cover screen. Yeah, if you're a maniac, what I discovered when I went through this menu setting is if you do decide to toggle this on, there's a really clever extra toggle you could turn on that will actually close the screen when you do fold it. Now, hear me out. The initial concept of this is when you're wanting to continue an app on the cover screen, like we demonstrated before with X, that you can close the app and continue in the one-handed sort of environment. What this extra toggle enables is, yes, it will continue every single app on the cover screen, but Samsung still are aware that some people intentionally close their fold to lock it and put it away into their pocket. But what this does is it does both. It'll keep the app open when it's locked. So when you unlock the phone, it goes back into the exact moment of the app that you closed it. I think this is really clever and I'm actually going to turn this on because a lot of times you might be not done with the app, but you need to have a break, close it, lock the screen. When you unlock it, it's there waiting for you. Now, not a foldable specific app, but camera assistant as part of good lock, 100% recommend to anyone that buys a flagship Samsung phone. The settings that you could tweak and toggle in here just give you that little bit extra that you can get out of your camera. A lot of people say this should be part of the stock camera experience. I like that they try things first in this way. They let the power users really give it a go, see which ones stick, see which ones make an impact, and then they transition it into the main part of the camera app. It's really clever, and I'm, I like that Samsung do this, so I don't want them to stop. Galaxy Z Fold 5, amazing. Like I said, there's plenty more content from this little device to come. There's so much more that this offers you that is more than just the standard phone experience. So I want you to stick around. Please subscribe, like this video as well, because I have a lot to cover and a lot of things to talk about with this phone itself. So between now and the next video that's going to come out about this thing or the S23 Ultra or Z Flip 5 or the, the Tab S9 Ultra, which is, which is there, so much. Or... Hey, Watch 6 Classic. There's a lot to come. A lot to come from me. So yeah, looking forward to it. Between now and the then, please the, 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 come hang out with me on Twitter and Instagram. And I'll see you in my next one. Yo!